videotaped at the arm of the office at 230 Ash Street for distribution to the community TV stations in Reading, North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The, the board recognizes the importance of hearing public comment, uh, the discussion of the chair on items on the agenda as well as not on the agenda. And we just ask that all parties direct comments to the chair and please also just uh, state your name and address and, and ideally come up to the mic so everybody uh, can hear you out in TV land. Um, so with that, I think um, we'll fill a UK to be board yeah, secretary yeah, tonight. Really yeah. And it looks like Harry. Why does he get to be secretary? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> he's very, he's very good it. at it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we have from the Reading Select Board, Vanessa Alvarado, Mark Doxer, welcome to the meeting. Um, we don't have the FinCom rep, but I think... Uh, oh, sorry, Sean, and oh. I apologize, we do. Okay. I don't think I've met you, but maybe I have. Sean what? Sean Jacobs from FinCon. Thank you for okay, coming. Very good. Um, so, with that, we can uh, go to public comment. Um, uh, Armel D. Cab, do you have any? George, do you have any any comments? Um, nothing at this time. Okay. And um, so I think we're ready for public comment. Mr. Doxer. <laughs> May render the item five moot, I mm -hmm. suspect. Mm -hmm. um. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, thanks, folks. Um, Mark Doxer, 110 Beaver Road, member of the Reading Select Board as well. Um, I wanted to come in and speak with you folks this evening. Um, I have some sort of notes in front of me. I'll probably add lib from there as well. But um, the Select Board had a meeting on the 21st of January and reviewed some of the discussions surrounding the payment. Um, and my board members um, had hoped that our boards or a subcommittee would have, have met um, to talk a little bit more about it. And, and I'm using the word they were a little disappointed that we all haven't met. Um, and I don't, I'm not pointing that uh, at you. I'm, I'm pointing it at kind of us because we haven't made that happen. And I think it's something we, sh we would like to do. Um, the select board um, kind of had a discussion where we discussing how has this been going on in the past how might we take it going forward um, I've been attending some of the meetings Vanessa has been attending some of the meetings and we, we've talked a little bit about um, the process to date and wanted to talk a little bit more about how that how we'd like to approach you about doing that so we felt that you know the RMLD obviously is part of Reading and the town and RMLD staffs and boards should be working together more collaboratively and I think that was one of the outcomes of that discussion Specific to the payment, we believe the best approach is to talk together before any decisions are made. And as part of the discussion, clearly we need to agree on a change factor in the earnings payout, as was discussed with the uh, two-year kind of hiatus and changes. Uh, it's well established and it's a part of the fabric of the relationship um, that there has been this earnings payout and some kind of a change factor that gets assessed with it also. That's in the 70-year history certainly the last 20 plus, that's certainly been a very clear aspect of how it's been done. And I think as we're thinking about it, or certainly as the board was talking about it, we're thinking less of the, the pilot that's going to all of the towns, a little bit more about um, what I'm going to call the earnings distribution to the town of Reading. Some strong concerns got raised at our meeting. Um, the town manager, superintendent of schools, um, expressed concerns about one of the, the options that uh, is on the list right now that would result in a substantial decrease in both short-term and long-term payments to the town, um, decreases from historical levels. Um, as you know, the town and school budgets are built around planned revenues, and a cut in, in the order of several hundred thousand dollars would wreak havoc and require cuts even in the fiscal 21 budget. And the fiscal 21 budget is being discussed and built as we speak. It actually is going to be going to town meeting uh, in April. So there's a lot of work going to the Finance Committee first, and then it's going to go to town meeting um, in April. To say that this has raised alarm bells would be a bit of an understatement. Um, we're very concerned, and, and as we looked at that option one, in our view, it's not a reasonable option uh, in process or in impact. Um, it could really wreak havoc on things. I know that there was a study that was done by Energy New England. In fact, I was here, I think, for that meeting. Um, in one of the things that I took from that, there, there are very, certainly there are issues with it. I think we can all talk about that. But one of the things I decided to look at was utilities that are paying over a million dollars to their communities. And in the 
study that was shared, there are six of them. They had an average payment of 4.4% of revenue, and RMLD by that calculation is at 4.3. Point here is simply that we should work together to find an acceptable adjustment factor. Um, in our view, the current proposals, um, it, it, we appreciate that there, there is more than one proposal, um, but they don't fully reflect the needs um, of the town. We think that one or more additional options should be on the table for discussion, which would change the adjustment factor um, in perhaps a different method. And I think that's what was discussed when the two-year payment freeze was agreed upon. One of the areas that um, was also touched upon, um, and I don't know that it's necessarily related to the payment specifically, but it was a discussion about the need for capital, uh, increased capital funding and improvements. And one of the things that is a real advantage that the town of Reading brings to the board is the ability to raise debt, if so desired, and at pretty incredible rates. Um, on Tuesday night, um, I, I actually signed the forms, we all signed the forms, the town raised $6 million at 1.06% interest, which is amazing. Certainly much better than government. <laughs> um, and you know, funds that are put into a bank account at this point would be earning more than that. So it's a facility that's part of our relationship. And the reason I bring it up only is that um, as capital needs exist, um, there may be benefits that are available where the town has some expertise and opportunity. And that's part of, I think, what the relationship should include. It does by law and, and it does by desire. So just to kind of summarize and, and, and move things along, to move the process forward, the select board would welcome a meeting between the two boards, either formally or in a smaller group, to continue the discussion before any of the proposals are, are voted on. Um, the board uh, allowed me to come forward today um, to speak for the board, obviously not to bind in any way because we have to have public meetings to do that, but to kind of express a desire to find a way to kind of sit down together and, and, and work this through. Um, see what other options may exist and to find the, a, a solution that's going to work here. So I thank you for your time. Thanks, Bill. Did you have anything to add? Okay. Um, if you want to stay, uh, there's one thing I would like to say about just to, just to explain why we had what we had on the January agenda. Um, you know, last year we, a study was commissioned by RMLD and when it came out in November, um, it was released to us and to the, the citizens advised, uh, the, the cab. Okay, so now they have this document. Everybody has this document with a set of recommendations in it. It was the only sort of piece of paper we had with a recommendation on it at that point. Um, and it, you know, it is what it is. I was as shocked, you know, as you and I. Um, you know, I think Colleen and Wendy, you know, also sat down and instead of having that be the only thing on the table as of November, and I know you were present at that meeting and saw that slide in November. That in, in January we, we, we said okay here's we're gonna make sure we start with three options and I think we said at the meeting that it's a start of here are some options and not just that one but here are some that have been recommended by staff and we'd also welcome your uh, input and then we said that at the meeting um, and we say it again tonight so if it's you know if it's a joint meeting we could do a joint I'm happy to do a call a joint meeting um, speaking for myself as chair, if I may make a comment, and that's yeah. so yeah, I'll or comment too, Mr. Chair. <coughs> so why don't we start with John? Yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, we share your concerns. I mean, we have for two years. This is not something that's just happened, Mark. You know that we've been working on this. We've been building fact base. We've been doing this, and quite frankly, and I'm, I've said it before, I'll say it again in every meeting. Before Colleen got here, our new our general manager, the RMLD was mismanaged. Uh, you didn't maintain. The town didn't maintain of the system and the reliability of the system, which backs up into holes failing, transformers failing, so many things of the eight plus million dollars worth that all of a sudden we, we were faced with the lights going out for all of our ratepayers and our citizens. And then, so we're caught between these two rocks, right? I mean, in terms of trying to give the town as much money as we possibly can because we're all, except for George over here, we're all ready and <laughs> capable, <laughs> all members of this this board, we want to do the right thing for ready, but we serve four towns. So we've got to maintain the four town perspective. And the bulk of the power comes from that gentleman's uh, territory.
territory over there. It's not just ready. So together, we're very, very strong as a combined entity in purchasing power. It gives us tremendous leverage in being able to do that. And for what Chuck has done and if you've attended any of his uh, presentations, it's been absolutely stunning what they've been able to do in terms of purchase power and actually being able to sell power back uh, to other individuals because we're so good at it. So we've, we've honed this and we've tried to make it a really perfecting run organization and it's come to light through all the facts over the last couple of years that we just can't dodge this bullet. We need to, to get this thing out there and get it done in terms of the maintenance. Once the maintenance is all done and once we get over that hill, opens up a whole new wealth of other opportunities and things we might be able to do for the town. Uh, so I, ju I just wanted to state that, that it wasn't like an overnight kind of we decided to do this. We have uh, a duty to the four towns, not just to Reading, to be able to make sure that the maintenance is maintained and we're doing the right thing. And that's a big price tag, unfortunately. And it's unfortunate we kind of got to this point in time, but no, I mean, Reading has had its own issues from an economic perspective before you two were sitting on the board. I mean, I've been here in Reading for, what, 45 years now, and I've seen multiple economic uh, issues that have arisen that should never have arisen uh, in the organization. So everybody's to blame at some point, you know, for kind of the economic situation that we've gotten into. So in any event, um, we, we pay Reading more than any other municipal in the entire system in Massachusetts. Correct me if I'm wrong. And it's a significant amount more uh, than what was the next uh, nearest one? I don't know. It would have to be as a function of lo load or customers, and you would be correct. Yeah. In terms of just millions of dollars. I mean, in terms of, and it, it happened because of a formula that was put in place many, many years ago that didn't reflect the fact that we weren't maintaining the system, at least not the way that it should have been maintained. So we're not doing this uh, just because you know, we, we're, we're angry with the town or angry with you guys or wanting to flex muscle or anything. It has nothing to do with it. It's about the facts of the system that to be an electrical utility, you got to have power on the system. And if it's not there and it blows something up, then you're liable and people get very upset. I mean, look at PG&E. We don't have to go too far there. Or we look, look at Columbia Gas, which happened. Everybody said that couldn't happen. It did happen. We don't want it to happen in our core town. And we need an immediate answer to that from a maintenance perspective. And that's what we're addressing. That's really what it's what it's pretty much all about. As far as the bond issue, I mean, I, I don't know how the other members of the commission feel, but uh, if I believe that if we can do it with our own cash and self-fund it, that's the way we ought to do it because we've got cash and we want to do that. And if the town wishes to use or to raise debt for their, you know, whether it's schools or buildings or whatever it may be, that's great. I, I that's That's wonderful. But uh, as far as this commission is concerned, or at least in my personal opinion, is that it's much better to be self-funded if we can possibly do that. And that's what I would really certainly like to see. So I'm sorry I've been taking a lot of time in terms of uh, answering you. I'd be more than happy to meet board to board. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely. The reason we don't, the real part of the reason we abolished the subcommittee was because it was totally dysfunctional. Members of the select board came over, and I'll be very blunt, demanded, demanded what they wanted and got up and left the room. Josh, you want to take Vanessa, Vanessa, come up to the, please yes, come up to the, uh, to yes, yeah, thank you. Happy to have the dialogue. Hello, hi, Vanessa. Um, Vanessa Alvarado, Select Board. Um, so I think, I mean, at this point, Mark and I are here. We are hopeful to move the discussion forward. Uh, in order to consider an arrangement and a formula that takes into consideration the needs, as you've mentioned, the capital needs, as you've mentioned, John, of the commissioners uh, and RMLD, as well as the needs of the town. So whether, as Mark mentioned, that's a joint meeting of the full boards or whether it's a subgroup of some kind, then that's fine, um, either with Wendy, um, Colleen, Bob, and, and Sharon, et cetera, if that's appropriate. And we can certainly talk about that offline. We would certainly be open to that. But I think, you know, the past is the past. Previous boards are previous boards. But we're here now, and right. we would certainly welcome working with all of you. Likewise. And please, Likewise. yeah, without leaving the room. <laughs> we're, we're all looking forward. We really are. I mean, I, I hate and to I just, I do that, think speed but is, it got us where we are. I think speed is of the essence. I think it's it's good. We, we, we you know, we have three years that this has been 
in the ether. And, and yes, I'll, you can speak in a minute. But I just think we should let's 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 do it. You know, let's get it done in the next as soon as possible. I think we should start yeah. the conversations and then see. We've had well, yeah, I'm, my only point is there's been three years of conversations. So, you know, at some point we need to move on. You know, we're we're it's not as complicated as as it, it's not that complicated to get this done. And I think if we can get in the same room, then that would be yeah. great. Yeah. Well, I know you guys were on a two-person committee for the last <laughs> few months, right? I mean, we were. Yeah. Not anymore. I mean, it's one of those. I mean, to your to the point of like forming committees, it's like you formed a two-person committee about payment to the town of Reading. It's just another, uh, you know, what are we doing here? So, we we have some things. Let's get let's get feedback. Let's um, let's tweak them as needed, as, as if we all agree and 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 do it. Let's move forward. So yes, I would love to call a joint meeting. Phil. Yeah, so I just want to remind everybody that, you know, when I first came on the board here, Wilmington had taken two votes to withdraw from the system. So we may talk about the commission meeting with the selectmen, but there's a third party involved here. Right. And that's, you know, right now we have the options out to the CAB for their input. I don't know, you know, when that, you know, when, when that input will come back, but there's a third party involved here. You know, I lived through the I lived through the withdrawals. There would be no winners if any of the towns were to withdraw from the system. There were no winners in that case. It was the analysis, and I think that's still true today. You know, and if we have to, you know, we, we need to. I, I'm more than happy to meet, but I just want to make the point that there's a third party that also right. should be part of part of this this discussion. And I don't think yeah. any of us, none of us, right, except you, were were kind of in the in the mix at that point, right? You're the only one. If you wanted to, I mean, you brought it up. So, so what happened? Phil, I'm curious. If I may, yeah. yeah. Phil, I'm curious. How long? How long have you served on the commissioners? What? what? How long have you been a commissioner? How long have I been a commissioner? I'm in my 33rd year. Mm -hmm. So there's, okay. there's yeah. we, that's what that's called is institutional memory. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So why don't you just give the brief recap on what happened? If so, with the so basically, when I came on the commission, yeah, um, there was an issue with the town of Wilmington. The town of Wilmington had basically. Um, you know, taken votes to withdraw from the from the district. On what basis? On the basis that they were unhappy with with what was going on down here. They felt that the everything was being operated for the benefit of Reading, and not for the benefit of the outside towns. Okay. That was the feeling. And so the, the town meeting took a vote. To took do the what? Votes, took two votes to withdraw from the district. Okay. So Wilmington. Wilmington did. So Wilmington town meeting got exercised, and Wilmington town meeting did two, not one, but two votes. Right. What does that and have so to be a year apart? Uh, yeah, I don't remember. I don't remember the exact. What ab would that also coincide during the time of mismanagement? Of what? No, no. Of, of RML. That word? You had mentioned. Uh, John had no, mentioned no, the this, mismanagement this is, that preceded. No, no, no. This is like this before is two, that. Two administrations before that. Yeah. Right. Norm Reinerson was the man was the manager when I first came here. So was the issue was the payment to the town of Reading. Payment to the town of Reading. Plus there was some issues with street lighting. Uh, the fact that the they didn't feel that. You know, there was no representation. You know, it was a taxation without representation issue too. Mm -hmm. In that, and so basically, what Len Rucker, who was the manager at the time, and myself, we negotiated with two selectmen from the town in North Reading, Bob Kane, North and, Reading uh, or Wilmington? Jim Stewart, or Wilmington, Wilmington, yeah. Wilmington, and came up with a 20-year agreement, which created the CAB. You know, in terms of that, created the above the line payment. We had to go and get legislation from the state house. Right. I remember going to the state house, and they were they were that's, having. They, we were that's the why there's an above the line payment because we were of that on special the same legislation. Agenda as the racing bill, and right. we're looking at the room. What are all these people doing here? <laughs> and then the below the line, of course, is the voluntary discretionary one, and it started at 1.5 million, right. what 20 years ago, and now it's 2.5 right. million. But you also have to remember that you know there was also a lawsuit. So if you hear the if you hear the term 85-121, Colleen can explain that. And you know we're we're in terms of our bottom line number. We're limited to what the net net uh, plant is, not the gross, which it was before that. The only other, and I'd like to just add one perspective yeah. there, which is that that Reading is the only system that has this situation, where most of the most of the customers and load are not in the municipality that has the light plant. There are others that have some other territory. You know, Peabody has South Linfield. That's a you know very small part of their thing. I think Taunton has Raynham and Berkeley, the whole towns, or just mm -hmm. part of them. But, you know, Taunton's a city, and then it has these small towns. Mm -hmm. And there might be a little bit here and there where there's a little bit of a boundary, but I think that's it. So we're like a total outlier. But let me just – so I just want to get why that – why this is 
not a straightforward let's let's sit down and you know negotiate with you or it's it's not that simple I mean it, it just isn't you know I, we wish it were so but that's why anyway yeah, so. yeah please thank you uh, Phil thank you for the background yeah. uh, I think I, I realize we, we've um, inadvertently hijacked your public It's comment. fine. I mean, so, we need to have the conversation, and you're here, so let's but, have but it. But we are glad to hear yeah. that uh, you'd be willing to meet with us, and we would look forward to that. And sure. so, uh, Dave, Chair Chair, we can plan something for the future, near that future? That would be great, very near. As a, as a preliminary conversation. Um, yes, and, and also just to be clear, <coughs> at, at, as of tonight, there's not, a, there's not, there has not been a suggestion or a request from the select board or from town staff about something that you would like to see done or, or feedback right there's and there's not a an idea that you've put forward at this point correct we have not uh, put our own proposals forward no, okay. because we had been hoping to go into it as a conversation okay well we have had a year since it's been frozen so mm -hmm. it's not that much of a surprise that this issue is hanging out there and it's it ends at the end of this calendar year with not nothing so that that can't be a surprise <laughs> so you know we, we've done what we've done we're, we're trying here so yeah, Tom. Yeah, so, uh, <clears throat> I mean, a lot has been said. I guess uh, <clears throat> I agree with collaboration. I, I think that's the foundation of, of success. But uh, I, I think it, it's going to involve an underst really understanding positions on both sides. So three of the five of us are town meeting members. Uh, I've lived in Reading 40 years. You have that. I mean, so we, we understand, uh, and I think I speak for most of it, we, we support Reading as a town and we've, we've lived here so that's a given I, I think what has been missed not by people in this room particularly but uh, this all got started uh, because I was at town meeting by uh, a perception that uh, and the word was used ATM machine that this place was <laughs> coining money and the ATM on Ashley. Uh, <laughs> and, and it began if those who remember frankly as a uh, uh, desire to increase the payment which focused us on a reality that I don't think we had been focused on because the previous 20-year agreement is basically an annuity, right? It's a tied to CPI, and it goes up every year, has gone up every year, and would continue to go up every year under that formula regardless of whether we handed zero revenue. <laughs> I mean, that's there was no uh, – which isn't the way you can run a business, right? It has to be tied to economic reality. So that was one issue. The, the other thing – You've all seen the financials. It's an open book here, as it is for town. So the revenues are, are flat and actually declining. I think they've been declining the last three years. Uh, so, and that's a byproduct, a, a terrible byproduct of the cost efficiencies that we're doing, right? With solar, with uh, all the programs we're doing, it's cheaper, <laughs> right? And uh, but that doesn't pay us anymore. So we're, we're making less money, so to speak. And we do have significant infrastructure costs. I will say. They've been addressed responsibly under Colleen and her team, and we see we see the byproduct of that in the in the rates, right? Very favorable rates, and not only enviable rates in the, for, for towns, but also enviable service levels. So, I think those are the realities. So, so part of the discussion needs to be uh, there's wants and needs. So, we have an obligation as town uh, our MLD commissioners to do what's best for the survival of this because. The only way we can increase revenue, as you know, is to increase rates. So that's not a that's not a win-win for anybody, right? We can increase the town payment, and then we we we, we pay more in rates. So uh, this is going to require some ingenuity. It's going to require some understanding. Uh, uh, you know, with people working together, I believe you can come up with some innovative solutions. But it, it's a challenge because there are things we have to invest in the infrastructure. We have to also serve four towns and you know uh, Reading is not the most uh, significant part of our revenue base be because of the number of industries so we have to recognize that and, and so there's a, a fairness issue so all of these things need to be factored in and uh, you know I, I think that uh, we just have to have tempered expectations knowing that we aren't an ATM machine and that we have to manage responsibly and uh, you know just find a way to do this and we have been very painfully aware of the situation. I've served on override uh, <laughs> committee, so I, I, I get it. So I would just say in, the, in our discussions, we need to walk in each other's shoes. 
Thank you, gentlemen. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for thank you very much. Please, please stay. We have other interesting items on the agenda. Yeah. Want to watch the paint dry? Phil would like to correct something. One correction from what Mr. Mr. Rock said: the the payment to the town, the pilot program, is not part of the 20-year agreement. That is not part of the 20-year agreement. It's just the above the line. The above the line is part of the 20-year agreement. The, the pilot program is not part of the 20-year agreement. Yeah, but the I mean... Recommendation, but it's not part of the... Right, but it, I mean, at the end of the day, we're, right. we're talking about a pot of money, right? It doesn't really matter right. which yes. pot, does it yes. particularly? I just don't want anybody to go away thinking it's part of the 20-year agreement. Okay. Our next agenda item is payment to the town of Reading. <laughs> so I think we can <laughs> move on from that. Take <laughs> that tire. Um, we did. Um, Good segue. Well, you know, we have, we do have, anyway. Um, so, can we your report, please? Um, Thanks, I, I have a couple of project updates that I, I wanted to give you yeah. um, on that, and then mm -hmm. as part of my report, I might ask Chuck to talk about a couple of the community things that are happening, um, and, then we can, and then we can move on. So very quickly, <clears throat> just to let you know what's what's going on with um, with the roof at, at this building, uh, this product that we had talked about. Uh, being installed, we need five days of dry surface non-frost, so it's been pushed off a little bit. Uh, we're expecting uh, that once we get that, it, we, they do two 10-foot patches. They let it dry. They do a pull test. Yeah. If it adheres properly, they'll be able to lay it in. We're just waiting for that between five and seven days, so it's a little bit of a hiccup with the, with the vendor wanting to, um, uh, to find the right day so it, we get a good seal. Um, the deck repair, uh, as you know from the past, the OSHA uh, condemned the deck, and so we, we, we demolished the deck at the end of uh, 2019. We're just pouring a foundation so that you, you can walk out. <laughs> it's not going to be a deck anymore. Uh, once that foundation is poured, they'll measure the steel railings. You know, the steel railings take 8 to 10 weeks, and then it's just going to be a flat um, uh, like a, a, not a paved area, but just an area. We'll put some tables out there, whatever, but nothing fancy. The whole deck and wood, everything's gone. So that should be done uh, before April. The concrete is actually being poured January 28th. Uh, the customer parking lot. I know that's something that we all wanted to have done. Um, that, uh, unfortunately, what happens is because of the December, we had a couple of snowstorms early. The asphalt plant shut down. My understanding is they typically come back up mid-March. As soon as the asphalt will get an occupancy permit and they can they can put the lines. I was hoping that they would put the lines down on, on the top, on the ba um, the coat that's out there just to at least start getting it open, but apparently there's an occupancy permit that's related to that. Um, it is going to be nice when it's done. We'll have a couple of benches. We'll have the EV chargers, and hopefully that will be a, a nice place that people public can come and, and charge their new electric vehicles. Uh, so that's the update on that. We apologize to everyone for the inconvenience of, of parking, but we are working to try to get that done, and I think it'll be, it'll be worth it. Uh, the last one is the generator project, our emergency generator that services all of these buildings and all of our system backups uh, failed. Um, they were digging uh, on Monday, and they hit a unexpected foundation that was associated with an old chimney from the production plant. <laughs> so instead of removing like eight inches of concrete, it ended up being 18 inches of concrete, so there's a little bit of a delay in that. And then they'll pour the new pad. Uh, so yeah, there was a big chimney there, and I guess they just poured the concrete pad and then stuck the old generator on it. So. And we, we put in the new footings and we, we kind of ran into that. So those are kind of the updates on the four larger projects that are happening on this campus um, so that everybody is, is aware of that. Um, next, Terra Energy, the, the public power summit. Um, I've gone down the last couple of years just for a couple of days. Actually, you guys gave me permission, but I didn't actually put in for it. It was more of a, um, a learning thing for myself. I may put in for it this time because I'm being asked to be a speaker on um, microgrids because of the ACES million dollar grant we got on our battery. Um, the rest of the country is very interested in, in what New England is doing because we are so unique and our price
pricing and things like that compared to the rest of the country. Uh, so I'm proud to be able to represent Yarm Mountain in that, in that talk, and hopefully there'll be some little video clip that I can share when I get back. But it's just a, it's a couple of day uh, trip, so it's, it's nothing, um, it's nothing big. But anything that I learn from that, I will, I will bring back. Um, so I'll need uh, authorization to, to do that. Uh, certainly, please fill. Okay. Moved that the uh, RMLD Board of Commissioners approve Ms. O'Brien's travel to and attendance at the next Terra Energy um, Marketing Public Power Summit in Malapan, if I pronounce that right, Florida, from February 2nd through February 5th, 2020. Second. In favor? That's all against. I think that's a 5 0 vote yeah. in okay. favor of the motion. The next one is the APPA legislative rally where I usually go down to Washington and represent uh, the RMLD with NEPA. Um, I can request approval for that, but I actually have too much on my plate, so I'm probably not going to go. Mm -hmm. I have other uh, commitments and, and meetings at that time, so mm -hmm. is it okay if I s say I, I'm not requesting permission at this point? No, you must go. <laughs> um, <laughs> I just got too many meetings and stuff going at that time. Chuck, are you planning on going? You are not. Okay. So we, we will have other representation for this area, and so I will still provide a presentation okay. when we get back, but I will tell you what. We typically pick a couple of topics because mm -hmm. when you go in and you meet with the legislators, you only got a couple of minutes to go in. So I will let you know what those are, and if you have any comments, I can pass them along to Energy New England mm -hmm. and some of the other systems that might be going. Should we still um, do the motion in case something happens and you want to pay your attention? Just a, so uh, maybe you've already explored this. So it so sounds like it's always very worthwhile for you to go. Is is there anyone else on the senior staff that would it would benefit to be there in terms of representing? Our yeah, members? it's possible. I I'm just hearing from Chuck. I can I can ask. Um, who he thinks might be appropriate to go, or maybe it might be time for Hamid to, as yeah. a successor, sure. potential successor, to go down and learn what it's like to have uh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe we could approve the sending of a person. Well, I don't think we need to. Yeah, I don't think we need to. We don't need to approve well, it. That's, that's her. You oh, know, okay. Okay. Manager's yeah, jurisdiction. Yeah, yeah. We, only, we only have jurisdiction over the manager. Right. Yeah. The more important part is that I will make sure that you know what it is that we're going down mm -hmm. and what message we're going to okay. bring. And what we felt was the feedback when uh, when the rally's yeah. over. It's only a couple of days, and it goes yeah. pretty quick. So I, uh, I think that you build momentum when you go to those things. If you skip a year, <laughs> you know, right. it's like you go back to ground zero in terms of the invisibility. <laughs> well, that's what they say. Mm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> right. <laughs> I I did send out. Um, we had talked about the electric vehicle workshop being sometime in February with the town payment going on. I sent out an email to the board and to the cab to just say that I spoke to Joyce and Chuck and we thought that perhaps maybe the library was a bigger venue yeah. in order to accommodate a round table for electric vehicle owners. Uh, so we would do our presentation and allow everyone, uh, you know, facilitate that. We think it's going to be really a great thing to do for the community and, and being at a library like that, I, I hope that the other towns will be more encouraged to come, like Wilmington and North Reading. Uh, Joyce is going to be doing all the press releases. We're looking at library availability dates right now. So instead of having it in February, if you want to move your cab meeting back to 6.30 uh, um, instead of 5.30, if that's okay, I apologize that changing that, but I, I just think it will be a, a better outcome and a better presentation if we, if we do move it. And we're thinking April because March we do all of the um, homeowners uh, educational programs that Joyce already has uh, listed and has, has been on a public release. Sounds good. Are we ready for uh, the, the seventh item? Sure. So I think here this is more um, of, a, of a technical adjustment based on the fact that we changed the fiscal the calendar and that doesn't, doesn't need to be a big rigmarole over it. More yeah. like, uh, do you have like any thoughts? Uh, 
Yeah, sure. Do you have any thoughts, John? Yeah, I, I, I would uh, I would suggest, and I could make a motion if, uh, if you all agree, that we increase uh, Ms. O'Brien's uh, salary by 1.75% to be reflective of the uh, period from 6-30-2019 to 12-31-2019, uh, as well as a bonus of $3,000, because I thought that that would be representative of what we've done in the past, and um, as we move into the On this. I'll second the motion, Mr. Chairman. Is that a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll move. Do want you, why don't we uh, uh, move that uh, Ms. O'Brien's salary uh, be increased by 1.75% beginning 1 1 2020 within uh, for representative of the period from 6 30 2019 to 12 31 2019 with an additional bonus of $2,000. Second. I'll second it, Mr. Okay. Chairman. Uh, any discussion? No. Yeah, I think again, it's a, it's a good technical adjustment to the calendar. Um, it would, it would uh, be reflective of uh, the salary in, at the end of June 2019. Yeah, we've given them the option to, to accept it as a right. bonus yeah, or yeah, implied yeah. ICMA, so I think okay, we'd good. Okay. Whichever way you would like to do it. Okay. What should the language then say? And do you, I'm sorry, do you want to add anything <laughs> fully as the subject of this motion? Um, <laughs> just, I guess just an option because last time I, I, I missed the, the ICMA end of the year, so I could, you know, I didn't have a choice. Yep. That wasn't anybody's fault. It's just that it was guidance as to what you okay. could do with that. Um, mm -hmm. so, so it's best to leave it as an option. So the stock went up 30%, so you all owe me for everything that I oh. missed. <laughs> 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 so is, is that motion language adequate then? Yes, that's perfect. Okay. All right, then I think we're ready for a vote. All, all in favor? All in favor? Yeah. Okay, that's five, and all against? Uh, we got uh, five votes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I will continue to do my best to uh, make this the best it's ever going to be. Thank you, Colleen. Thank Very you. well deserved. A mentor to yeah. We're working hard to become not only the best utility, but also to be able to provide mentorship to other smaller utilities that have been waiting for us to step back up to the plate. Great. So Please have the minister to speak to your board applauded huh? the gentleman. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chair. So I, I just acknowledge, which I think is a collective effort, but I, I think the going forward, the, the paradigm for this process should be doing it exactly when we did. So close of year, doing it in January. I know that uh, do it for all kinds of reasons and it happens in most companies. These things happen later than sooner, and even though they're retroactive, uh, this is the right process to use. So I'd encourage us to make sure they're done in a timely way for everybody's benefit. Thank you. Instructions to the future board. John? Uh, yes. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Parting gift. <laughs> One of many pieces of wisdom I'll be I'm sure we'll be collecting them over the next three months. <laughs> Thank you, Colleen and everybody. So are we ready to go to the goals? Popular goals agenda item. Yes, we do. Ha we do have a, a little table matrix that I like uh, this that uh, Tracy made based on what people sent in. And this detail, she attached details to it. from yeah the chair uh, for the viewing audience. I think it might be this, uh, okay. clear to just let them know that. Actually, can you put this up on the screen? Yeah. Not well, what I was really going to ask is especially that people understand that Colleen has a large number of goals. Uh, this is additional consideration from the board's perspective, right? Exactly. And pri priorities or, yeah, there could be certain priorities that we that we feel should happen. And I think had we had this been two months ago, one would be let's let's get the payment issue resolved. And I think that's kind of, it's, it's going down the tracks. Uh, but yes, your point is well taken, Tom. Um, can I say something about that too? I, I, um, I think it's really important that um, Colleen help drive these goals Absolutely. with us. That her input is incredibly important because whatever we decide together, she has to implement. So I think it should be a really all of us talking about it. So maybe the way, just because there's a lot of things to cover, should, maybe yeah, I'll... You want to start with me since the, since my boxes are empty? Okay, why don't we... Yeah, let's... <laughs> you, I saw that... Um, yeah. You have no goals. I, yeah. Well, my, unfortunately, you know, I just flew Little back... Little cuts in, to the chase. I just flew back in from Florida 
plane already landed. Yeah, I, I just, I just flew no back from the here. Plane Phil. landed an I just, hour ago. I just flew back from Seattle, and the plane landed at four. Yeah. So, yeah. so, so I mean, I only have, you know, it's the same two goals I've always had. You know, my goal would be reliable power, and at the lowest cost. I'm sorry, I cannot go along with those goals. <laughs> <laughs> um, that's, that's a basic. All right, so that just fills out the matrix. So why don't, well, thank you, Phil. Why don't, why don't I go through and, and just sort of read them? And maybe the first cut at this, unless you disagree with Colleen, you, you know, you, maybe like a jury, you could say, no, 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 no that, that juror is out. Um, you know, I don't like the, how he's looking. Let's, let's, not, let's not go jury. You know? okay. So John had a few that were, all right, John's were complete the filling of employee vacancies. I'll just read through them. Can I stop here? Please. Okay. So all I'm going to say is yep. a, to recognize a barrier. Yes. I just want you to know up front the barrier. Okay. So filling the, the vacancies, very important goal. You're hiring a new HR person, great accomplishment. We do have three unions here. Yep. So part of the last phase of reorganization is rewriting job descriptions and having them accepted by the union. So as long as you understand the process, we are moving forward for a full complement of our organizational layout. All right. Now, John's next one was to was to complete land acquisition for the new substation. One which I wholeheartedly agree with. Um, I don't know that anybody would disagree. You know, and, and I know it's probably already Colleen at the top of your list. At the top. The top. I mean, it's critically important. Um, really, you think it's the top priority? Yes. For reliability and. Yeah. Uh, I think George would agree too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, John's next one was. Uh, Kind of general look for revenue enhancements, and um, I know we we I know you have some small cell things happening now. Maybe some requests. Maybe there's an opportunity there. I know it's a tricky thing, and the dollar value might not be very high, but that could be one. Um, I know you've also been expanding some of the leasing on the fiber, which is great. Um, happy to help provide if you need any expert input on what those markets are. I, I just from my private my work life I can help on that if you ever need it just let me know and Mr. Uh, Chair, I, yeah. I would just also say from the prior discussion we had earlier this tonight it, we, we need to recognize that in any company or in any business the top line is very important <laughs> and right. uh, so we, we understand why ours is not moving but we need to we need to move it because inflation will continue to happen and all the other costs don't go away so yeah I, you're right as uh, Jack Welch used to say, if you're not growing, you're dying. Right. So we need to grow revenue. I guess that means we're dying. <laughs> Reflective of his firm, too. His <laughs> <laughs> Case in point. So, you know, one thing there, and, and George would welcome your input on this. Um, you know, I know all the, all the towns are all talking about how do we electrify and get our buildings, maybe use heat pumps, and we have great programs. We're one of the few municipals that has heat pump rebates. You know, then, but if people throw, throw out, oh, well, how can we do this at our school or our whatever? They don't know how to start, so I don't know whether there's more we could do, or maybe as part of this joint meeting, we could we say what is, what are your questions and what do you what do you what data do you actually have? Somehow that I think could that's be a, a very big part of the mix. Well, today they they issued the Massachusetts came out with some of their climate action okay. and sent you the email. Um, I think with that coming out uh, and maybe understanding a little bit better if there's going to be more state support in those type of things. Yep. I can work with Chuck's group. We can come up with a training program and meet with each of the schools uh, and do a round robin between, you know, what are we offering and, and what does this mean and what are the rebates. And um, sometimes the most difficult things is if they're not, if the system is intact, what is the cost of replacing right. it? Right. You know what I mean? So it's we can try to help with those economics. Um, do you agree, Chuck? Yes. That would be great because there's your we growth. We can prepare you know. a training. Yeah, and then yeah, and then and then some of those facilities folks may not. They may need. They may need the help. Right. Right. Yeah. We okay. can have another workshop where we invite all of the facilities. Electrification um, workshop. Yeah. All right. Well, if you remember, I don't know how long ago it was we, we were sitting here. I think over there was a boardroom. We had a strategic planning meeting around that and other subjects, and mm -hmm. uh, I think that would not be a bad idea. Okay, that's great. Okay, so that's some concrete things that could happen. And then John had succession plan for senior level employees. Um, yes. Okay. Working on that. Mm -hmm. And then the li 
list. The last one was a little open-ended, develop a list of things that we usually can help with here. Yeah, Touche. I, <laughs> and I had to put that there because, uh, one, we don't get paid. We have Correct. a limited amount of time. We've got a certain amount of expertise. Certain and so limited. Limited expertise. <laughs> <laughs> well, if there was limited time. <laughs> but you're but actually I correct. Yeah. Both. But I, I think you know, as part of, the, part of the pushback to us is what are those things that we might be able to help with just because you know us. You've known us for years now and what we might be able to do. You just never know until you have an issue and a problem and you throw it on the table and you go, oh, I had no idea that you had those connections or ideas or anything else that could possibly help you get to the next step in our process. Here's a, here's a copy for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I would love if you would entertain me bringing in some trainers. We, we may ha be having a new board member because Tony is going to be leaving. Mm -hmm. leave um, and so we have training all the time. So board training, open meeting training, uh, what your role is, what my role is, so that we're always clear um, and everybody's on the same page. And I'm not talking about anything big. Maybe 30 minutes before a meeting, we can have um, yeah. someone come in. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Idea. Great idea. Great idea. Where, yeah. where, do you have resources in that area? Um, it d w if we do a couple of different topics, we can have legal come in. We can have the state come in. You know, the state is is a specialist on this. Legal is a specialist on this. Yeah. So we may have a combination of a couple of things and, and make it a qu fairly quick, high level. Here's the highlights points. And just people can remember that um, when, they, when we're off and running. That's all. Would, uh, I haven't thought right through it clearly, but would some of that be appropriate for the cab members? Yeah, because yeah. right, sure. everybody would be invited to I think to it's good. Yeah. I mean, they yeah. deal with the same. Yeah. Yeah. And that way we're all on the same page. Okay. Um, so it sounds like you will develop a list of things uh, that, yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and Tracy will help me put, some put the training together, and I think we should do that. Agenda items. So a lot of times we're we're building the agenda um, just before the meeting. Real time. Real time. And I would feel more comfortable in the open meeting laws if the if I felt like the agenda is. It's almost like we should be making the agenda for the next meeting at this meeting. And you can do that under procedures, according to the AG's office. Now, that's not reality all the time, but if we got more in the habit of doing that, I think that would give me and staff a little bit more time to put together really good qual quality presentations um, so that I it's what you want, and you convey to me what you want, and then we can work on it. Um, sometimes I feel like we're giving a presentation, and I know it's good, but it could be better, and I just think if we talked about it, like, what do you want to see next month? And then I could be really prepared, and Chuck could be more prepared, and he's not looking at me crazy on Thursday morning. And <laughs> <laughs> right? That's okay. And it yeah. just, I just think that would help everyone. It would help Tracy. And yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I'm not saying that always happens because things come up, and we need data, and that's great. But if we just got got on that path, no, I think it's been a mm -hmm. historical issue. Yeah. I mean, it's. Again, that, that's just how companies work, but it's not, it isn't best practice and it doesn't allow you, as you said, to. It does keep it. us in line with open meeting laws because it, that way you're all basically telling me what you want to know and then I'm going and doing it and it's, it's always, a, you know, a quorum of direction and then we're not, no one's confused and I'm not reprioritizing staff's work. You know what I mean? So. So could you add an agenda item to the agenda saying discussion on next yeah, month's discussion Unders on... Right. Under sure. schedules, when we talk about schedules, actually talking about next month's agenda, not everything, but key points that you might want me to do studies on or something, you can put in as um, procedures if it would come under procedures. As long as there's no opinion mm -hmm. discussed on the topic, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. All right. Yeah. That's good. And so we can even do that at the end of this meeting. Correct. Wouldn't that be exciting? We 
to talk about potential itemizers. Oh, wait a minute. Let's not get tired. All right. Well, it sounds like all five of John's um, ideas are good ones, which is really a, a first, actually. <laughs> I, I actually have one more, and then I'm done. Okay. Okay. So policies are a governing opportunity, right, to basically tell me yeah. what you would like done. So, for example, this removal policy that's been out there, yep. um, we've spent a significant amount of time unwinding everything and how power has been bought over the last whatever. And now it, it should be very transparent. You guys should know exactly. We use a TFA based on price and time triggers. Chuck did this amazing slide that we presented, and it's supposed to be interactive. Mm -hmm. So now the, the state's coming out with clean initiatives. You know where the bill is. You know everything. So now we can put in this project or what we want to buy, it spits out an impact to a rate. In, out, in, out. So whatever it is that you want me to reflect that policy on, I have now provided you the information in order for you to make that decision. So, but again, you have to make the decision about the policy, and then I will make it happen. But I feel like it's my duty to at least give inf make sure that you're clear on all the information to make the to make a good decision. Okay, so don't in, in policy meaning like what percentage of renewable well, that, that that's our job. Right, that particular policy is you know ch what Chuck's presentation is, what the state is doing, what our commitments are. What is our commitment? If mm -hmm. you want to go above and beyond that, if you want to go past carbon free and go into renewables by keeping RECs, Chuck's going to put that in. We're going to explain what's the impact on the rate. On yep. the rate, yep. okay, and exactly whether we're above or beyond the requirements that are being placed on the MLP. So you're saying you'll do whatever, you'll make sure you meet the state requirements, at least the minimum state requirements, and anything more than that would have to be an instruction from the right. commissioners. Well, actually, with the state requirements, it's kind of interesting. MLPs are technically exempt, exempt. Mm -hmm. but because we want to, and we actually do more than a lot of other utilities do. That's why this has all been unwound and presented to you, so that you can see that the majority of our portfolio is carbon-free. Now, we have some renewable projects, sure. We also have renewable projects that don't have RECs issued. So Chuck can talk about all of those type of things. But you'll be able to make a decision if you say to me, we want to be carbon-free, but we still want to have true renewable, and in order to do that, I may have a renewable project where the wrecks we keep them, but they were only trading for a, a penny. So I don't know how much credit we get for that, but we get the wreck and we're called renewable. Mm. Or we might have a renewable project where the wreck is trading for a lot of money that we could invest into a new clean renewable. Chuck has already told you that these electric vehicle charging stations, our commitment to that is to make sure that the power charging those cars is coming from carbon free. So this would all be part of the revision to the policy. But once you decide, right. we will make it happen. Okay. So that whole thing, we'll do another night. Hopefully not, we don't have to get into those weeds tonight and tell us what all that means. But thank you, Chuck, and thank you, Kelly. Okay. It, it is on here. It is, done. yeah. It I'm just talking about the policies. If you want to change the policy, that can also tell me what you want me to do different. Correct. Mm -hmm. So then going to the others, and you, you're ahead of um, – you anticipated the next one. Three of us had, you know, kind of determined what, what our percentage would be. And as part of that, you know, mine, mine added the, the tweak that we should, as a board, weigh in on elements of, relevant elements of the proposed state legislation. Like, that's kind of what we're here for, is to make policy decisions. And that, that if there's something that's proposed that could be a whole piece of legislation or even a, an element of a piece of legislation, it's, it's proper and right for us to just vote a position and discuss it. So that's the only tweak I have on that. So if every, unless people disagree with that, then we already we have three of us that have put that in, and I see nods and yeah. And it seems like you're saying it's really a board goal, Dave, not a. Right, and that is not in really in fact, and that's a board a Colleen goal. goal. Correct, it's ours. You're yeah. quite right. That is a that's a. I mean that to be a board goal, but we determine. You have the tools, as you said, but we have to decide what policy we, what is the amount we want, and. If there's a relevant piece of state legislation, we are making our voice known of, okay, yes, we agree with that or we don't or whatever. Unlikely that we wouldn't, but okay. So that one seems like that will 
That's we all agree on that. Then we also had a few. This has come up because it driven by this the town wanting to know could they redevelop, and then the, the ask here is simply develop some data. Like, is it even feasible? Is it ridiculously expensive? Is it you know would it cost a hundred million and forget about it? Whatever the data shows, who owns these pieces of land? You know. And is it like um, this? I, I don't know that I understand the scope from what you've written. So could you just tell me what? Okay, we. I guess that's could, that's not the goal. The goal's inside here, right? Um, yeah, this is the kind of the. I mean, I hope that that can't be the goal. This is just the shorthand of the goal. Yeah. The, right. the emails yeah. had. Yeah. Give them more specificity. Yeah. Right. Uh, I had an original version that is now been. My email. Well, can I, I make a suggestion? Uh, yeah. Uh, so, if that's accepted as a good thing, in in terms of, uh, we need to know more specifics. Maybe we want to agree on the high level, and then we can. I think that's and, right. And probably realistically, I'd say, if we come out of here with what the goals are, it's you know it's, we have to integrate this. We're just seeing this for the exactly. first time. I'd suggest coming away with here's the goals, and, and then we pull them together for the next meeting. I think know, that's right. Does that make sense? Yeah. We'll Phil, yeah, I mean, here's my my problem with this one. It's the fact that you know, this is a long way down the road. This is what, in my opinion. You know? What do you mean long day run? Long you way. Know, there's no there's no plan on the table. It's just all discussion, uh -oh. discussion, discussion. It may be ten years before anything is done on this site. That's how usually it works. Yeah, but so all this is is developing. You know, I don't think we should spend a lot of money on this. Me neither. Or go into big you know detail or cost and all that stuff. I I think it'd be more just monitoring. What the town? Yeah, but isn't that the town is thinking about at this point? I think it'll be a much more effective thing Mr. at this point. Uh, Mr. Chair, mm -hmm. you are. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, I guess the way my perception would be, you can look at it as a, a re reactive measure or a proactive measure, right? So if we wait for the town, I mean, if they're not being critical, then it could be ten years. But if there's an opportunity out there to do something, I mean, we've talked about Dave investing. You know, questioning the investments here because there are a lot of costs. It's an aged building, so uh, there's also a case of being opportunistic. If we found another location, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. And if this one was, if there was thirty million dollars worth of land out there, which there isn't, but I'm just saying, to pick a ridiculously high number. I'm not saying it's the goal, Phil. I'm just saying if it's we own the land, then it's worth many there's, million. There's no the only reasonable land would be to move Camp Curtis Gill. And that, I understand, is off the table at this point in time. So, I mean, I think, you know, you're talking long, long time. Yeah, you know, I, I view I mean, this I wouldn't move this to outside of Reading. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I know. Think I this should be in Reading. I, I just view this as a, actually, as a flow chart that here's the biggest hurdle to doing this, and then the next biggest hurdle is the next. And the biggest one might be, what do you do with all the trucks? Or where do you put all of these trucks? Mm -hmm. Do you put them outside? I don't know what that is. Or, but maybe a, a three or four stage. Here's the flow chart that you need to think about if you were to do this kind of a study, and maybe just use that as a as a mechanism to. I mean, I guess something other than nothing. How about that? I mean, because <laughs> I mean, because there has been a lot of talk. There was a meeting with. Really with <laughs> That's, really That's crystal clear. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it can't be that there's a that there's uh, planning processes or concepts floated, and we're not even at the table for them. Um, I think we have a lot to offer. Even to say, w if we know enough to know that, oh gosh, this would cost tens of millions of dollars to execute and would could never be done in sooner than 10 years. Or conversely, if we knew what some of these parcels are worth, I just think we should be part of that discussion. That's the highest level of it. Okay. Maybe if you gave me uh, a scope and an yep. amount of money and say, okay, don't spend more than a couple of thousand dollars, do a quick research on land, yeah. and yeah. an approximate cost of of a facility and what's the value and what are the value yeah. of these parcels and buildings if sold and the money went to our measure yeah I mean at the very I, at the very least because uh, as I recall the last discussion we had on the subject there was not a lot of clarity around who owned what <laughs> so I mean this is right, very yeah. basic so if you could come to a table yeah, that too. The, on a development meeting with the town it'd be nice to have some basic information. But yeah, I agree with Phil. I mean, we don't want to spend. Even if you even if you do a two thousand dollars study today, again, this you're talking ten years down the road. We're not talking, you know, the next two or three years. 
It's just, but it's a chicken and egg. Twenty years down the road. But it's a chicken and egg thing, and we're either the chicken or the egg. We're one or the other, you know. When we built this building. The idea was we'd be here for fifty years. George, now we're not. I can t- we George, are we the chicken or the egg? <laughs> <laughs> George knows which we're one it is. Fifty years. <laughs> one of us. Think of a piece of land in Wilmington where I can put you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I knew you were so in George. Uh, I was uh, waiting <laughs> after Phil made that comment. Oh, look at John. Right under the. Wilmington Power. <laughs> nice <job>. Okay. <laughs> Can we move on? Yeah. Okay. So that that there's that one, and there's a discussion to have. Is the, David just so I'm clear? Yeah. Is the concept to evaluate the potential of giving this building taxes back to the town and trying to save more money so the town gets more money to see if if a change like that to allow economic development in this pocket yep. would benefit? Or save us money and help the town. Is that what I'm hearing? Well, yeah. The, I mean, okay. uh, yeah. And, and and by the town, it just doesn't mean just the town government. It means everybody. It means no, I, I real mean, estate values and how the downtown looks and all that. But, but the methodology is very very important because, I mean, if for example, I mean, if the town were to say, uh, sure, we'd love to have that property to sell and get more money out and more taxes, you get out of there. As a matter of fact, why don't you go float a bond issue and build your own building someplace else? So that now we have the bond issue in our books, and they have the revenue from you know the building or whatever else. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that that's unreasonable. I'm just saying that in a financial perspective, it puts a tremendous burden on us at the arm of the deed to maintain our rates and to service clients. And so that's one scenario that could come out of all of this. So I've got to be very careful with what right. would transpire in terms of, of what the recommendations would be. Mm-hmm. Right. Because if different parties have different views. We're looking. Right. We're just looking to develop. In my mind, to develop the facts. About I think uh, uh, aren't we trying voting? Uh, so uh, we all chip, but let's get through the whole list. Yeah, we'll get through the whole vote. All right, that, and that's another one that was it showed up on three three things, and then um, and the revenue stream scorecard from Tom. Tom, how does that differ from John's possible revenue enhancements? Is there more you wanted to say about the scorecard? Uh, yeah, I, I mean, I guess what I envisioned this. Uh, it's certainly intersects it. I guess what I was looking at this is is having uh, which I Colleen is is tracking already. She's doing those things. So I, I guess from a board perspective it's uh, keeping that in front of us all the time because yep. again revenue is a critical issue. So there's a number of things we are doing but it's a dynamic kind of process. But and have the discipline that we actually include that that becomes a, a, a you know I think as a board having scorecards is helpful you know rather than looking at a lot of pages of data so having a scorecard every month or a quarter saying here's the here's what we're getting out of solar here's what we're getting out of this revenue yeah. enhancement here, you know doing this the you know the rebates and whatever okay. so yeah I mean I think they they're very similar okay and then then the only other one that's on here is well Dave has a accelerate electrification which is a, I think a great one and I think it also dovetails with um, you know your point earlier, Tom, about what could be sources of revenue growth and electrification is you know th- that that dovetails, right? Yeah. I think we all, I think from what I've heard, we've all agree with that. Yeah. I, I don't know what that means. Electrification. It means well, it means like, like what's out of the 1930s. Exactly. Let's electrify something. <laughs> well, it's like if if a town ta- if a big building has a gas furnace and instead you put a ground source or air source oh, heat pump okay. and then the the heat is coming from electricity. Yeah. It's or, also or more it's electric cars. vehicle it's ca- charging stations. Yeah, that'll be electric vehicle. promoting electric cars so that more people are using electricity. That's right. Okay, so, and it dovetails with the revenue growth goal. Um, so, that's all of them except for Dave has provide fiber to one large pilot customer, which is an interesting one. Very to you, Dave. Thank you, Dave. I appreciate it. Just little, try to old time save. Throw a bone. Right. <laughs> you know, one 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 way to tweak this could be explore how. To promote use of fiber by emerging wireless technologies, which is a thing. I know you've already asked. Uh, That's kind of what you said, right? It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's yeah. well, it's more well, eloquent. It could be. I mean, a large customer could be Verizon, right? I mean, although they have FiOS, so they already have fiber. But there's AT and T and there's others, and if that could be how that, I, how I would recommend that get tweaked. Okay. And again, my offer stands, Colleen. If you want any. If you want any, you know, need any expert help, I can get in touch with people who can give you. Not that you do. Not that you do. Um, 
and then Phil's reliable power. Now, I just don't know about this one. You know. Yeah, I vote against Can that. Can you please? <laughs> what are you trying to get at here? <laughs> I'm just trying to say these are the basics that, that we should, you know, as as we've said, we're in the wires business. Yep. You know, and so you know we should, you know, no matter what we do here, yep. this should be the absolute base. Okay. Mm -hmm. I guess I agree with that. Right. <coughs> and it also, I think we have the substation as a top priority mm -hmm. already on Colleen's list and mentioned by John. Mm -hmm. So I think that goes very much to that. And I think I agree with you. Lowest cost, I don't know that I agree that it has to be the lowest cost. <laughs> right. um, but that also goes to one that, I, yeah, was, was that we should, the last one that's on the list is that the board should review our mission statement and potentially update it at some point this year. I don't even know what those details might be. But that kind of, you have, those are mission type things, right? What? Yours go to mission. Yes. And yes. I'm suggesting mi update mission statement. Yeah. So you and I are actually agreeing on this. Okay. okay. Uh, I mean, I just, I agree with what Phil said. I, I guess from my perspective, as I look at Colleen's job description, that's kind of what she does as part of her job description, isn't it? So, I mean, that we, I, it's I just don't want to lose sight that you know these are the things we we should be doing. These are the base. Yep. We can go off and say you know we need to accelerate electrification. Okay. And that's fine, but let's not lose sight of, of what totally our basics agree. are too. As so part of this whole process, right? Yeah. In terms of like making this coherent and something that is in, that's tractable for you, what I would suggest, and then tell me if you, what you think, I could iterate with you with the permission with Colleen until. We have this to something which is specific and that you feel is workable. Actually, that's fine with me when we okay. got it written. Okay, and then, uh, then maybe what we could do is kind of this, the essence of this discussion and, and all these. Unless anybody disagrees, we just kind of vote to say that that we would like the, this matrix as discussed here and maybe as edited over the next few days to be what we collectively recommend. I'll, I'll accept. Yeah. Yeah. Just like Manny. Yeah. Yes. You gotta say the same <laughs> no, thing. Right. No, I was going to say we could do this offline by each one of us taking this list and put a ranking one, two, three, four, five, whatever on it, and then send it back uh, to Tracy and let her compile it so we see what the vote is. So we don't have to. We Can we combine a few of them here. first, though? What? Can we combine a few of them first, do you think? I think we already have, haven't we? Like revenue enhancements yeah. or revenue yeah. streams. Yeah, yeah I mean, I guess what I was going to. This isn't going to be your goals, right? We're going to take. This is the universe of things from which yeah. we're going to select. Uh, critical, whatever is it, two or three? I mean, I think we. Yeah, but I mean, uh, so many of these are they. Three, 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 quarter, right? three new ones for a quarter. Yeah. <laughs> three for a quarter. <laughs> yeah. I've been there. I don't want to make it sound like a, you know. Never mind. I'll just be quiet. <laughs> no, don't be quiet. No, we we want to hear what you say. I'm doing these. You hired me to already do these. Right. So. Yes. Amen. What I'm asking is. You know, if you want it reported in a particular way, you want presentations, you how you want it formal, mm -hmm. um, or you want me to shift priorities to, to do more focus on something, is more of the input that I need. But there isn't anything mm -hmm. here that I don't think that we're already at working on. So one, one thought, maybe, take one of these for a board meeting and say we'd like you to focus on one of these that we have listed here. Tell us what you've done and what you're doing, and let's provide you input on in terms of. And then the next board meeting, we have a different one, right. et cetera. But th then at the quarterly review, we kind of covered three that have been talked about in the board meeting. Does mm -hmm. that make sense? Mm -hmm. Good idea. We well, could roll and we could add them to the agenda yeah, at the end of this meeting. At the agenda. Yes. We'll set this is the right. next one. Yes. Yeah. Next month, we'll cover this one. Right. Good yeah. idea. Yeah, I mean, the only. Uh, it needs a little cleaned up, in my view. Yes, it does. This, Right now we have eight, eleven, fifth. We have seventeen things. But so there's we'll really about six there when you merge. Yeah, but they, but we got to merge them. I mean, yeah. if we keep this list in front of us, we're going to be. All right, they're voting on the wrong things. Yeah, right. I, I, pr I propose that if, if unless somebody else wants, that I can go and edit these down and and, and vet them through Colleen. I like and that. Present idea. them back to all of you. So, so I like I, that. In terms of combining them. Yeah, I'll, I'll yeah, sit yeah, down. I got to sleep on it. Vet them. Yeah. Run it through Colleen, and then we'll I bring it back at the next uh, meeting. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I, I guess this is our first time through this, so I yeah. I think since we know Colleen's going to work in this stuff, I would err on the side of being focused because, you know, if we did yes. end up with nine, I, I just think it's... No, it should only be a Agreed. couple. 
you know what I mean? Because like, like she said, she's doing all these things. It's just saying, I think what we're saying is this year we want to put extra focus on these couple areas, right? It, that's what I'm saying. The operative word is okay. couple. Right, we, couple. Have, right. Yeah. Right. we have a plan, I believe, that I'm yeah. editing these down, running them through Colleen, presenting them back to you, and we'll put our hands up. All in meeting. favor of Dave doing that? <laughs> fine. Second. Inform. Okay, fine. Third, fourth. I guess, is that a motion? Yeah. No, just it's oh, just no, an no, affirmation. You, you Good, Dave, actually, that's a great. A, you've been assigned. Yeah, we okay. can't have five people do it's, it, Dave. So it's an, that's a good idea. Okay. Okay, great. Let's move on. And <coughs> Colleen's going to update us on ac recent activity where a vendor is trying to install yeah. small cells in the it, town. It's kind of an interesting. So we had uh, some customers that were concerned that loopholes were being petitioned to the DPW to be installed in front of their location. And there had been some communication to RMLD that I wasn't aware of, but it came in to an operating assistant question on whether or not we allow uh, cell attachments. We didn't have a master agreement, so until the master agreement is done, technically the answer is no, but I think if the call had come to me, it would have been like, we're going to have a master agreement done in a couple of weeks, and we're working on one. But this particular um, uh, company is business model is not to coexist on electric utility poles. It's really more to have their own poles so that they can put cells up uh, and sublet out uh, different carriers from the top of those poles. We would much rather have uh, those type of things attached to our poles um, in accordance with the town's policies on aesthetics uh, in addition to our master policy, um, which cares for the safety of the public, the workers, and the assets of the RMLD. Creating a master plan has been very difficult. It's very complex uh, in everything that you have to address when you're putting these type of things. I gave everyone some suggestions, uh, like RF emissions, um, RF uh, interference with our antennas, things of that nature, shutoffs for high energy to the linemen, uh, union issues, excuse me, <coughs> stop clocks. And this all came about because the FCC made an order that wireless is now considered a utility. And prior to that, wireless was not considered a utility. So now it's in the same boat as Comcast and other things. And we can't without, um, we can't with any discrimination say you can't attach unless there's a safety or capacity issue. So that's kind of the guidelines. So. So what happened with this is these poles were going to be installed. So they went to the DPW, and now there's going to be a continued hearing on that. We got our master agreement out. We actually met with Verizon Wireless today. It was a very productive meeting. They want to work with us on it. We also sent it to AT&T, who was the one that had hired this company uh, to put the poles in. So now AT&T has our, our um, agreement. In addition to that, I sent out an email to all of the cab members saying, listen, I, I, I'm putting together this memo of suggestions that towns should have in their cell uh, aesthetics policy that everyone should really have. And, you know, it, it's not my job to tell the town what, but we just want it to be cohesive with us. So if the town says we want a restriction on 45 height, I'm going to follow that, but I have a lot of poles that are 50 feet, so that would mean that I, I'm not going to allow an antenna on a 50-foot pole if the town says 45-foot pole. So we have to come to a, 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 an agreement of what it is that the town is trying to achieve and what we're trying to achieve as a utility. And I have to work with each town uh, to help them with that, I think, because I, I'm not sure that anybody really has has that policy that's, that's finalized that meshes in with us. Each one of our poles is 50% owned by the RMLD and 50% owned by the Verizon. Mm -hmm. And these companies that are going to request, I don't know that it's in the form of a license, but you do have to ask the town if you can be in the public right-of-way. Um, so there are some processes that I'm putting together in that memo that I will bring to each of the town administrators and town managers and explain, this is how we see that it works. This is where the FCC order applies to you as the town. 
this is where it applies to us. It doesn't apply to us. So right now we actually have an argument that that shot clock applies to municipalities, but it does not apply to MLPs. That does not mean that we don't want to work with these attachers, but if they give me 100 polls, I can't have 60 days to get them all done. That's, that's not going to happen. So that shot clock and interpretation of the shot clock, I can explain that to the towns and how it differs w with us and just get everybody on the same page. So that's all I really have on that topic. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, no, I, it, I, I'm missing a lot of <laughs> knowledge here. But so does this mean that m new polls by other companies will be put in, in the towns? The FCC says that they have a right to install a poll. They, they, they're not forced to attach to ours. Um, and there, they, like I said, there's FCC guidelines with. Yeah, yeah. I, I, the reason I'm asking is it just, uh, I mean, if, if as I think about it, you, know, you could go home and you yeah. could have uh, yes. 34 polls on you. Exactly right. And, and, yeah. and I, I, to the point of say, I mean, I, to me, it just seems <coughs> there's maybe there's a lot more that's been done. It seems like this is the Wild West. I mean, people are going to be sticking up uh, things on the t polls and it's right. going to be unregulated. And, it, it, and what about the competitive landscape? I mean, I mean as a practical matter, they're going to get put where there's demand and where there's the concentration of people. Maybe you'd want, need one near the train station. Like the first one that went in in Mansfield was done near the train station because you have 100 people sitting there waiting for a train looking at videos. And so the, the network crashes. And that's where, they, that's where they're going to get I mean, put But I mean, it just seems like it could be so. I mean, right now, I think if you go down most streets in Reading, you know, we don't have underground. You know, you wouldn't say, right. gee, I wish we had two more poles on this street. I mean, they they're, they're like they, every... They, they don't have to go on poles. The, the right, they don't. Policies. No, but they have the policies that say... You can go on top of a, bil a tall building yeah. or a... Yeah, but they have the option. They, they can go on, on other things, and the town's aesthetics guidelines are, would help the requester with that. But if they're not going to go on that, we don't want any additional poles. We, we, we don't want to lose the revenue of that small piece of money that right. they are going to give us, $270 per attachment. So, and we don't want... Any more double? We don't want any polls. And you haven't heard from Verizon at all. <laughs> we met yeah. with Verizon today. You did meet with Verizon. Yes, we did. It seems like it. So what do they want to do? They were the ones that came in and, and, and you have Verizon and then you have Verizon Wireless. I meant wireless. Yeah, I meant yes, the small cells. Yes, they came in today. And they're, what do they want to do? There's about 40 to 50, I believe, locations wow. in the town of Reading hmm. that they are interested in. All right. Well, that's It is my understanding deal. that it would be to attach to an existing pole. So we you also have Verizon Wireless wants to put 40 small cells on our poles, basically. That's my understanding, but it was very preliminary. We're, we're, and the AT&T, where there's the three poles through Tilson Tech. Why is it only three, though, for AT&T? Well, that's all they requested. So I'm trying to stop new poles and have them wait for the master agreement. Okay. Right, and but it's um, you need you also need the standards also. You want to have those. Uh, yeah, you want a master agreement. That's the legal agreement. But you want to have the technical and aesthetic standards in place. Also, would they interfere? I mean, I'm wondering Absolutely. if you start putting these. Isn't going to interfere? That's one of the, the things that would be in the technical standards. Is it may not. It may not. It must not provide interference. If it does, they have to do X, Y, and Z. Those are the types of things that go in the technical standards that we would adopt. Seems like this is. Uh, is Comcast involved in it too? Comcast does strand-mounted uh, Wi-Fi. You know how you see Xfinity Wi-Fi pop up? Yeah. They, they, they just hang, like, uh, you see a little square thing hanging on cable? Yeah. They just put it right on the strand uh, between the poles. Oh, okay. And I guess you have no control over that. It's their cable. I, I actually added it to the master agreement. Okay. Because I do want to. You want to control I it. I want to understand if that's considered a, an attachment, even right, though it's floating. I think in reality, what, what in other jurisdictions, they're just doing it. And they get power from the cable itself. The coaxial has power in it, so it's a, it's sort of self-powered, and it's a Wi-Fi transmitter. Okay. That's I think why I guess we brought a business up there for a while. So if you happens. look at the cable on the, on the communications in the lower one, and you see a little square <laughs> thing hanging down, that's the Comcast Wi-Fi router antenna. So that's what Comcast is doing. Okay. Anyway, okay, okay. Well, we're doing good discussion. Uh, but yeah. Good luck with this. <laughs> so Colleen's on top of it. It's complicated. A yeah. lot of other lay plants are doing stuff, and you know, and so all of that collective knowledge will feed mm -hmm. into 
before we actually got there. I had no idea that was going on, did you? Let's do it. Um, okay, Chuck, you're up. Sorry to make you wait so long. It must be brutal back there. <laughs> That's an hour and 20 minutes. He was riveted to this. <laughs> <laughs> to paraphrase Mark Twain. A um, couple of quick things to append to Colleen's report. Uh, we talked about a community relations update. Yep. And I, and I have a few things. Um, my experience here uh, over the last year has been that RMLD provides uh, quite a few uh, community support functions. But what's very interesting about them, uh, most of them have a very humanistic, interpersonal, uh, person to person, where uh, the employees here, uh, our team, uh, reaches out and actually makes contact with people in the community. And uh, I think that's a significant uh, improvement over the way uh, some other programs work, where, you know, they'll go out and hang banners and say, you know, hey, we're putting banners up for the community. Or, other uh, projects that they do around there to the community benefit, but without that interpersonal uh, interaction. And by that, um, uh, we have a historic uh, calendar uh, that we prepare every year and we distribute, and it's usually done in conjunction with some sort of a beneficial program. This year, uh, we ran a coat drive, and uh, we collected uh, an estimated 325 coats that were turned over to uh, Anton's, uh, cleaned up, and uh, distributed to kids and adults. Um, so that uh, was uh, yes. uh, one beneficial program. Did, did Anton's also donate the cleaning as well? They donated the cleaning yeah. 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 and distributed them. Yeah. And yeah. we aren't the only entity that contributes to right. that. But, um, we run, uh, as you know, art contests uh, in our elementary schools and our high school. The high school artwork, artwork is uh, hanging out in the hall, and the elementary school artwork is back in our uh, cafeteria area. Uh, we then judge it and, and hand out as many awards as, uh, as we can. Uh, the artwork is pretty amazing, mm -hmm. and we put a lot of effort into theming what we do so that every year there's a little something uh, different for the students to focus on. Um, we will be scheduling the awards in February, uh, dates to be determined. Mm -hmm. um, I think we want Colleen back from uh, Florida for, for those presentations. Um, as Colleen mentioned, our new homeowner information sessions will be coming up in March. Uh, we invite each year anybody who's moved into the territory to come in and uh, learn about what we do, our programs, our rates, uh, services we provide work with us and contact us uh, for any issues uh, that they have and we explain uh, new programs that we have uh, such as the um, uh, IVR um, notification system for, for outages bi-directional uh, that will probably be discussed at the, the March meetings uh, we will be uh, working out the uh, launch of the IVR system uh, we have uh, field tested it uh, I hope to Colleen's satisfaction. Uh, haven't heard anything bad back yet, so uh, we're assuming that uh, we're ready to do a couple more full-scale uh, kinds of tests. And that's the system where you can find out where there's an outage and communicate. And, yeah. you, you have the chance to register, which means uh, we give outage updates. Uh, so when an outage occurs, uh, we may not know the initial cause and uh, the estimated time to restoration. But uh, as we go forward uh, and we establish those in different areas, uh, we can push that out. Customers have the option uh, to uh, text or call in uh, to the system rather than to the operator uh, and let us know, although our metering system itself is uh, a parallel uh, notification uh, of any uh, unusual circumstances out on the 
system. So. <coughs> um, Jim, can I make a quick comment on that? So when we do the campaign on the IVR system, right, so that you're going to say, I want to receive a text, just like your kids in school tomorrow, school will mm -hmm. be closed. So you'll have an option between phone call, email, and text. It's really important that people sign up um, for a couple of reasons. One, so that you know if there's an outage in your area and what the update is, estimated time of restoration. But in addition to that, you gave me approval for these updates of meters. When we do meter updates, we're not knocking door to door. We're going to be replacing the meters in areas. And it would be really helpful if we could use the IVR to send out, okay, we're going to be in this area, mm -hmm. send out a polygon, and say we're going to be doing meter upgrades for the next two weeks in your area. Yeah. And so for that reason, all the more important that everyone signs up. Thank you. And everybody needs to sign up with their cell phone, their mobile numbers, right? Because they wouldn't want to give their home number because it wouldn't work if the power went out. They wouldn't get their alert. Right? So it has to be all you mobile numbers? I think you can check one, two, or all three. You okay. can check email. Yeah. We, we have three options. You can receive a text message, which would go to your cell phone number. Mm -hmm. You can receive an email. Uh, often that goes out over a different system and mm -hmm. will come in. Uh, and then the third option uh, is that you receive a call. But it can be to your cell phone message. or your home. It can be to whatever you want. I'm just thinking if the power's out, the home phone call won't work, right? You can get it. Some people like phone calls on their cell phones instead of a text. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, in some cases, the landline works. Uh, I'm not sure how many people still have landlines, but... Uh, I do. I know. <laughs> well, Comcast just disconnected. They, they had text. You're, you're they do VO, so no VOIP power. now. They discontinued I don't know. That. I've never tried it. Oh, there is no power uh, because they, they do digital. VOIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol. Voice over internet. <laughs> the Bell system used to have its own. Yep, that, that was a low voltage, 12 volt system, right. and it would carry on even when there was no, right. no power. No power, so right. So there's no more calls that can go through without power. But we will also take multiple devices and multiple uh, contact points. So let's say that uh, somebody here at the table was married uh, and wanted both themselves and their partners to know that could give two phone numbers. We could yeah. give two phone yeah. numbers or a phone and text, whatever works best. Yeah. So uh, we're excited. Uh, it's yeah. uh, another way of reaching out to people. Yeah. So Got a lot of use for that. But that, that's it on the community relations. Uh, so the, the art contest is scheduled for February 4th. Are you saying that's now on? That date has been changed? Uh, I have that in my calendar for third, February the 4th and the 5th. Okay. I've made every one of them. I can skip one, right? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I didn't know that a date had been set. I yes, know. Joyce has already set the yeah. date. Okay. Well, and even a snow date. <laughs> Joyce didn't update me. <laughs> okay. She and I are going to have a communications discussion <laughs> tomorrow. Uh. <laughs> it but says I, I dates so TBD. Can, you can do it, yes. Right? Yes. I've done every one of them. <laughs> okay. Since we, since we started. <laughs> So Phil will be handing out the awards. <laughs> it's all right. I didn't realize that the fourth had been picked up. Joyce will write me my script, and I'll be all set. <laughs> After she's done updating me, I'm sure <laughs> she'll be glad to teach. And actually, Chuck, you can be acting GM to hand out the awards with Phil. I can. Yes, Thank sir. you. For that <laughs> period of time. Okay. I, I will need, since you're responsible for the GM and I will be acting GM, I'm going to need you to authorize a round trip airplane ticket from for me from Orlando to Boston and then back again on the fifth. <laughs> oh, you're gone. I am gone. Yeah. The fifth is my mother's ninetieth birthday wow. and my fourth anniversary. But I am glad to fly back here for an awards ceremony <laughs> that Tuesday night. Okay. Not to make us feel guilty. <laughs> up to power supply on the agenda yeah. now. Mm -hmm. Phil? So next please. We uh, got all of the information in so we are pretty much set for calendar year 2019. Uh, the numbers are in, the numbers are done. Absent uh, any
adjustments that ISO sends out uh, over the next month or two. Um, we're in, we're locked. This is the performance for the year on the system. And as you can see, uh, we maintained uh, ourselves under budget. Um, the November and December actuals uh, for power supply costs came in uh, under budget. So uh, we, we finished the year without surprises and in good shape. Great. Next, please. <coughs> As you can see, the uh, the energy costs were close. Actually, the uh, energy costs in December were a little bit above uh, what we expected. Um, the savings will be in capacity and transmission. So the next two slides. Uh, there are the savings in capacity for uh, December, uh, slight for November, but uh, our capacity was about 1.5 million below what we had as uh, the budget going into the year. Well, that's great that they're so close. I mean, they, they're, they're really following it from mm -hmm. both the budgeting and the actual mm -hmm. operation. Well, capacity costs are normally fixed uh, unless there are uh, adjustments that ISO uh, floats through. But you're right, the, the capacity costs track fairly well. Uh, unfortunately, the capacity costs are only about 7% of the uh, total budget. So. Uh, and uh, transmission costs will also uh, look fairly close. Um, you'll see May, June, and July uh, actuals were below uh, budget. And the reason for that is the budget was prepared uh, without uh, an adjustment for the battery. And so the actual battery uh, impacts are reflected here. Next year, the battery will be budgeted in. But we had a May kickoff for the battery. We said, eh, you know, let's assume the, the worst. And uh, then the numbers look really good. I just told the Hamid. Okay, I whined about how much it was going to be and how bad a year we were going to have. Lo and behold, on time and under budget. Oh. <laughs> the hero, I get to go home. Yeah. <laughs> Sandbag that one. No! <laughs> <laughs> uh, next, please. So, uh, same slide. Uh, I guess what I would say about this is that um, we actually added a not quite sure how to define it, uh, resource powered by flowing water uh, into our portfolio. Hydro. I, I used the word hydro. Hydro? Yeah. Okay. Try that one. I'll, yeah. try, uh, I'll try that. Mm -hmm. we, uh, we picked up a hydro resource. Mm -hmm. um, See, I'm learning, guys. Very good, Dave. <laughs> Very good. And uh, we had uh, the uh, Exelon contract, which expired December 31st, so that will not be in the next one that you see. Uh, so, uh, all in all, uh, I would say a pretty good year. Uh, the um, loads uh, overall uh, were slightly below uh, what was budgeted. But we're working on uh, figuring out what the drivers are for that those are going to look at. We did have a meeting this week with um, one of the members of a conservation uh, commission here in Reading. He is a resident in Reading and he owns a consulting company that looks at heat pump technology for Mass Save. He's a contractor with Mass Save with I think it's about six years plus of experience and uh, he's going to come in He's coming back to us uh, with a proposal to help us uh, with the evaluation and implementation of heat pump technology uh, in terms of delivery so that uh, 
we have a resource that can talk with customers about making sure systems are not oversized, uh, making sure that there are the correct additions to the system. When you put a heat pump in, you have to put in an exterior thermostat so that it can make judgment calls as to which system uh, to bring online. Um, and uh, so we're going to entertain a proposal uh, there to, uh, to help us kick it off correctly. Sounds great. Okay. Uh, next, please. That's it. All right. Thank so you. that's it for 2019. We, we done did okay, I think. Yeah, all right. Thanks, Chuck. Yes. Good year. Chuck. Thank you. It's not me. It's that was your first full calendar year with us. Yes, it is. This is now uh, 15 months. Yeah. Right. And uh, Bill and I will be glad to you with succession planning and make it a priority of the commission because uh, both of us will schedule on getting our uh, sorry posteriors out of here uh, <laughs> so that you have the, the room and the ability to do that. All right. Thank you, Chuck. Thanks, Chuck. We come to my favorite part of the meeting, which is um, the end of it. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, kidding aside, we huh? oh, hi, Karen. Did you want to say something? Please, please come up. Yeah, please come up and uh, properly identify yourself for our television viewing audience. Thank you. Um, Karen Herrick, um, Reading Finance Committee. Yep. Um, this, this whole year I've been trying to understand your, your model. And I have a quick question is, how do you measure, uh, if it's a business, it's profitability. We want to talk about revenues and expenses. What is the key metric that a municipal light plant uses to say, Properly leveraging our assets and whatnot, however you want to do Heavily it. regulated, but I'll throw that one to Colleen. Isn't it that we have to only make 8% more than. He's, he's, he's studying. Do I need a piece? Should I write this down? Like, how long is the answer? Because it's late. I won't remember. 30 seconds. Oh, all right. Then I might remember. Okay, thank you. Um, we divide our system. You need a microphone, Chuck. We divide our system into essentially two operating characteristics that, that we work against. Power supply is roughly 75% of our uh, operating cost, yeah. and we target finishing the year uh, at zero. So we're constantly adjusting to make sure that what we collect from the ratepayers is uh, what we need to pay our power supply bills. Mm -hmm. And so that that's a pass through. Well, you're asking we make about no profit. You're asking about the overall business, not just power supply, right? How, within your industry, yeah. how do you compare if there's like some gold standard for like what is the, the what is the metric that says, oh man, I want to be like that electric, I want to be like that power company because it's like a turn on assets. What like what is it? Well, I can make just a, a one comment. One is we try to keep the lowest possible rates right. to our customers. So we we basically take the entire system, all the maintenance cost, everything else is associated with it, uh, the power supply cost to get to the lowest possible cost for all of our customers. That's very different than the investor-owned utilities. So the investor-owned utilities are traded on the stock exchanges, and they do have profit, like you've just described. Mm -hmm. They have profit targets for the bottom line, and they pay their chairman's $9 million a year, and they, you know, and they it's just amazing. There's a so is the metric, the kilowatt, the price per kilowatt hour that you charge ratepayers? Is that no, how everybody is say. evaluated in the industry? So we have a, a number of different metrics you can do for other meetings. So if you need just the metric on reliability, then yeah, sure, that would be one metric. But that's finan one metric. is there a financial metric? Right. So then there's a financial metric of rate uh, comparisons. So it is a price per kilowatt hour. Rate per kilowatt hour. Okay. For all classes, residential, commercial, everything. And, and then you have another metric. I'm sorry, which is what Chuck was talking about, which is your operating. The thing about it is that every every ge geographic area is different in terms of the characteristics of the customers, mm -hmm. how far apart the buildings are, which means more plant has to be maintained for this uh, less revenue. So these are I would 
so correct me if I'm wrong, is these are just kind of order of magnitude measurements. You can't say, well, because Redding's this and, you know, uh, Holden is that or, you know. Yeah, and Redding, Redding is very unique because we've got four towns in the district. The study I think APP did is we're the only, the only, the only uh, district in the nation that has four towns in the district. represents 20% of the load, okay. and 20% of our customers are commercial and industrial, but represent 80% of the load. Mm -hmm. So that in itself is a metric. So when you look at like the APPA statistics, they'll go through by revenue class, by kilowatt hour sales, mm -hmm. and they have to do it on each one okay. in order for people not to try to say, okay, it's apples to apples to apples to apples, because it's not. So. It's kind of a combination is, is what I'm saying, depending on what what metric you're trying to compare. And isn't another one that we, we can only make 8% more yeah, that's what I was than ask our too. cost yeah. under yeah. Chapter 164? That that, that's an allowed cap on the return. That's okay. 8% of, of net plant. Okay. Okay. Net plant. And that's a legislative. Okay. Okay. Yeah, 85, 85, 121. Okay. And that's only, that's not on power supply. Power supply is a pass through. So when Chuck says we saved on capacity, we don't have an extra million dollars. Mm -hmm. That has to go back to the customer. There's no profit need on any power supply. It's a it's a one for one, and that's another part of the law. As a matter of fact, aren't we characterized as a not for profit? We are yes, not we are not a non profit, but a not for profit. That means they can pay you like nine million bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We would love it's to pay salary, for $9 million. <laughs> you know, the, the PBD Lay Plant Board of Commissioners, they actually, they get paid and they get wow. health benefits, okay? Wow. They get, they get all in favor. You know what? Oh, Maybe we should have to I said so. I think it's in Now that I'm Okay, thank you. So this is like, I'm sorry, it's not a quick question and I already wish I had But it's a very good question, actually. stop if I forget everything. Well, you've heard a number of facets to it. But the one thing that I try to assess when I look at what's going on is overall risk. What's the risk of volatility in rates? What's the risk of running out of cash? What uh, are the risks of losing load? A ri um, a risk of infrastructure failing because yeah. it hasn't been maintained. So the thing that I look at is enterprise risk management, ERM. And I would go through and assess all of those factors. Okay, but that's not a metric. But that's it, a great it, thing. It you is a metric, that. and if people want to be like us, they will def well, they will define. But it's important. It, it is the, the measure of when somebody wants to be like us, they want to be nice, stable, low risk, customers happy with the service. Yeah, fair enough. But it, it all gets shaped around that risk yeah, parameter. Yeah, no, it feeds into our customer satisfaction yeah. metric and our liability metric. Okay. Thank you. Just okay. add one more awesome. thing. But Phil has yet another just, metric just, to share with you, Karen. Just, just to pat ourselves on the back. She doesn't want any more metrics. Red, Redding yeah. is seen as a leader. <laughs> we are seen as a leader. That's people, not a metric. People either. copy us. Yes, it is. Number <laughs> one. <laughs> right. Number people one. People copy us. <laughs> We're really sure. good, Karen. Yes. <laughs> Metropolitan right. Area Planning Commission told me he really liked your shred the peak and the mm -hmm. giant battery demo. See? He wants to hear it. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Thanks um, for coming to our meeting soon. <laughs> So um, next meeting, so the 20th, actually, John and I both have, turns out we have, con we can't be there on the 20th. Okay. And we just discussed uh, that the select board might want to have a joint meeting with us. So given those, and I think we all said that's fine. I certainly am up for it. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. That could we maybe try to have that meeting earlier in February? Or is that, like, what would be some dates that you all could, at least what would be some dates earlier in February that you guys could do? Let me look at my calendar. Sorry, I don't want to have. <coughs> Let me suggest that uh, we send everything to Tracy in terms of dates yeah. we could do. Okay. And she could recirculate yeah. those as a possible. Yeah. Sure. Are they dates for the board meeting or dates for the? Well, other but it could end up being the same meeting, right? Because the, we could, there could be a piece of it where they come and there's a joint meeting, and then we 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 have that, but then we carry on with whatever our meeting would have been. So, Mr. Chairman, just you know, I think at our last meeting we sent out the options to the CAB. For um, yeah, I know. Evaluation. Correct. I, I don't think we should meet with the board of selectmen until we have 
input the back from the CAB. Well, but I mean, they, they yeah. one doesn't have to happen before no, I, I think, the other. No, no, you, I think we need to have something back from the CAB first. Yeah, I agree. Before we have a meeting with well, the Well, that's George. Is there, a, is there a calendar for that? I don't, I don't agree with that. Actually. 20th. The 20th. Yeah, yeah but why, it doesn't have to be sequential. I don't, I don't know why I that know has you, to happen. Yeah, why does it have to be sequential? If they want to. We need to get their input. Well, we need both of their inputs. But I don't think I don't think a meeting with the select board is has to happen. It doesn't matter either I, way. I think it does matter. Can I, say I think it does. I matter. thought we said earlier that the cab is the third leg to the meeting. That's right. So why why not just have the cab come to the meeting and everyone gets to hear everything? Sure, that's, that's a great fine. idea. We could, yeah, of course, all it's three hard boards, to coordinate 15 people's calendars. The thing is, Phil, the reason I'm reacting the way I'm reacting is because um, we, we would not be taking any action at that meeting. Yeah, but of course, we're waiting for the cab before we take any action. It makes no sense even to meet, but that's a whole different argument, you know? Hmm. If we're this not taking any action, why even bother to meet? Just well, to because they want to they wanna have a joint meeting, and uh, we all love each other, and we want to have a big meeting and talk right. about things. Right. What are you, mm -hmm. Why are you shaking your head? I, I disagree. Okay. I agree with Phil. I think we should get the data in from our internal to our own organization yep. first so we have a good sense about okay. where we stand and then we meet with them and we can go back and forth and discuss whether it's yeah. right, wrong, or indifferent. So you think we should we should hear from the cab first? I do. Yeah. 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 I'm fine with that. Mr. Chair, uh, I guess I would land on that only in the, we know this has been a long process for lots of reasons, but the input from the cab will minimize because we, we could have good discussions with the town and then subsequently get feedback from the cab which could require it to be a much more iterative process and I'm not saying that we're only going to have one only for have a meeting with town but I think if we can position it so we have the cab input I think that that puts us in a better position of at least having more information when we talk to the town okay. the, the town is I mean it's clear that they have big concerns and we need to listen to them but what comes out of the cab you know is important for us to hear too so I think knowing that would would make the meeting more productive we could meet without it but I think it'd be a more productive meeting if we have the cabs input that would be my view it's called getting your own house in order first yeah and then moving forward. well I mean just hypothetically if the cab had raised a huge concern and that then we have to go back to the town and say, yeah. "I know we, I know we came this close to, you know, coming to an understanding." But guess what? You there's, know, there's no rush on this. No, I mean, I mean I'm not rushing in. Yeah, who's it. rushing? I'm not rushing. Okay, you're not rushing. No, I'm just trying. I'm trying to schedule a meeting. Is what Got I'm trying it. to do. March. It's too much. So why don't we go the next week no. after the 20th? We could do that. Okay. Yeah. Fine. I'm fine, fine with that. I think the issue was you can't be here the that that next week. No, you. No, actually, the next week I'm good. The 20th? Yeah, yeah so it's the one about after the you can't, but I, I could. That's correct. Yes. You're talking about the 27th? I could. The only thing I could do is call in. If you're okay with that, then I'm okay with the 27th. I, I'm not sure, just on a, the technology and not no criticisms of Admiral D, but, the, you know, if we had video conferencing or yep. something, I'd I get agree. it. But calling, uh, calling in is you don't know who's speaking. You talk over each other. I, I think it's uh, let's Let's send uh, our dates to Tracy, and when we have all everything yeah. in alignment with everyone, let's choose a date. Is there a date? Forget which meeting we have, but is there a date in February when everyone can meet? I guess that's the question. That's what I'm suggesting. Yeah, but there's, I mean, because the 20th is the earliest you're going to have the cab. Feedback. Well, actually, let's ask George. Is the is the twentieth the earliest you guys can meet? And yeah, I know we skipped January entirely for you, right? I have quite a bunch of things going on in February. I thought that is our budgetary time, and so uh, I won't speak for everybody else. Yeah. Plus, I'm getting away too. Mm -hmm. So you guys are still meeting here. On, you're meeting meeting here on the twentieth. Correct. Okay. Yeah, that's right. I'm supposed to go to that cab meeting. And it's five thirty, right? You guys are meeting early. At, at this time, yeah. Yeah. So. George, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but I'll ask anyway. So, <laughs> without saying why, but I mean, do you do you have a preference? Do you think it's advantageous for us in terms of you understand the overall process? Is it better for us to have the cab input? Do you think before? I would so? think so. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think yeah. it makes perfect sense. Yeah. As John said, get your house in order. Mm -hmm. Have have everybody's input. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. I agree with that then. Okay. I mean, we have a house that includes well anyway. Um, 
I mean, either way, we could have a cab, a select board, another cab, another select board, another arm. We could keep doing this, and every three weeks we could be having joint meetings with no. every board. No, we're not going to do that. You know, we have this well select board. We will not ever do that. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm a little tired right now, so. Yeah. Can we go move on? Yeah, to let's, let's, let's we'll move schedule. into the scheduling, I guess, offline. Okay. Okay. Is there anything else listed here that, uh, so uh, it sounds like, uh, may I speak to someone? Please. So it sounds like when you first assigned goals to me, that you failed. Yes, we did. <laughs> Which is to <laughs> set the agenda. meetings in an expedition. Well, I'm just thinking. You know, set the agenda so for next may meeting. I make some suggestions? Please. For whatever date that we're going to meet? Yes. Topical themes, should we say? Uh, yeah. So how about we discuss the recs? Right. So that everybody's on the same page about how that level. Right. Yep. Is that okay? Is that, I was going to suggest this. Yep. I mean, three. We have an in-house expert. Well, yeah. three of the goals. Yeah. Three of the goals people think right. were renewable energy. Serious. So yep. Maybe so the recs should be right in line. So yeah. the recs at the next. We get a presentation on the recs at the next meeting. Sure. As our, as our under procedures, under setting the agenda. Yep. <laughs> Is there a discussion? So we just have to make sure that Chuck's going to be here for whatever meeting. That Maybe that's the March meeting. I mean, I just fly back as well. No. Hello. All right. Did we want to have the? So we so a presentation on renewable where we are. Right. A presentation on Rex and how that works mm -hmm. and where we are. Right. That sounds good. Okay. That sounds good. Does that sound good? good? Chair. Yeah. Chair. Chair. Mm -hmm. I agree with that. Did we want to continue the discussion on goals? Because it seems like there's more. Yes, we, I'm gonna. We discussed that I would edit this offline, send it to. So Colby, that would be a topic for that, the next meeting. Yes, and then that will be, hopefully, a f final document that we can vote in. Final answer. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. And what about the whole? Um, can I ask one more? Oh, sorry. Can I ask one yes, more question? What about our finalizing of the new? Um, GM evaluation process. Where are we on that? I just kind of. Why don't, why don't, in the spirit of what uh, how we're going to handle this, why don't you sit down with Colleen and, and sharpen Tom, it up? Tom, and you come with it. Yeah, and, as and an expert in HR. If that doesn't violate open meetings, have the two of them meet with you, and then um, come back yeah. with, with something for us to vote. Or else I'm the other way. Is that okay? Yeah, okay. We'll that sounds like a good people. Sounds so we'll have you. That'll get worked out, and we'll vote on it next meeting. All right. Okay. I'm ready for the motion. Nicely done, done Chair. Chair. Okay. Um, yeah, okay. All go right. for it. Move that the Board of Commissions go in executive session to consider the purchase of real estate and to return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Second. Mr. Uh, Cino, aye. Stasi, aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Mr. Aye. Okay. All right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Okay. Yeah. Good.